brought them through all these things that seemed like was going to overwhelm them, consume them, destroy them, and brought them into a land that they could have, that could be their own. It's his promise, his commitment to them. This is their place. Because of his mercy. He provided food. He provides food for all flesh because of his mercy. Praise God. All of these things, because of his mercy, he has done and continues to do. Mercy is more than forgiveness. For the longest time I remember I heard mercy, I thought, you know, I just thought God's forgiveness. But it's more than forgiveness. It's so much more than forgiveness. This word mercy, it indicates kindness, loving kindness, mercy, goodness, faithfulness, love, and acts of kindness. That's an awful lot of good stuff. Because of His mercy, He does the things that He does. He made the heavens and the earth. He is good to us because of His mercy. He provides for us because of His mercy. He forgives us because of His mercy. He keeps working with us because of His mercy, because of His love towards us, His commitment to us, His steadfastness, His, His praise God. All of this because of His mercy. He continues to work with us. He continues to be patient with us. He continues to give us chance after chance after chance, opportunity after opportunity. All the good things that we have, all good things come from the Father of lights. It's because He loves us. Because His mercy is extended towards us. Because He's committed to us. He's committed to this relationship. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He's faithful even when we're not. Yes, He is. That's what's awesome. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. He doesn't change. He's not going to change. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to tell you where I got this, how the Lord gave me this message. I've testified about this before, that on midnight shift, I like, uh, I, I, I recognize sunrises really for the first time in my life. I'd seen a lot of sunrises, but I never really thought much about it. But, you know, that sunrise would help me and the most difficult hours, whenever I was, whenever it was just falling apart, whenever I was just didn't have hardly anything left, first couple hours to go before anybody was going to be there, and I needed to push through. So I would go up on the helipad because I could get up there because I was in maintenance. I could get on the helipad, you know. Me and security, well, we're the only ones that could get up there. And uh, I'd look at that sunrise, and I began to notice things about the sunrise. I would pray and I would talk to the Lord about that. And I, would, I noticed that it was different every day. Every day it was different. There wasn't a single day that it was the same. And I thought that was awesome. And I would talk to the Lord about it. There was times or whatever I was, I cried. Because I was so amazed at how awesome, how awesome God was. And how creative He was. And how wonderful He was. I mean, I remember watching the birds flying around as I was like watching the sunrise and the clouds and the colors and seeing birds fly around. And I was crying over these birds. Because I'm like, they're just born. And they just, I mean, it's just like in them. They can do all these acrobatics and all these things. All these cool stuff that I can't do. You know? The big 370 pound bear and he can't fly. He can't fly around. I can't, I can't do a cartwheel to save my life. But these birds, I mean, they're just birds. But they can do all this awesome stuff. I'm crying over these birds because God made these birds. He made the sunrise. And I was noticing that they were all different. And uh, you no know, time went on. I got off third shift. I got into this new job. And still sunrises are important to me. I got to be there early in the morning. I like it. If it's not, the sun's starting to come up now by the time I got to leave so I can see a little before I go. But uh, for a while there was dark. I have to look out the window. And I try to see it in the window out the fourth floor. And not too long ago, I was looking at the sunrise and I was like thinking about it. And I was talking to the Lord about it. And I said, you know, it's, that it's, made, it's, it's different every day. And I'm like, Lord, it's like this painting that you make in the sky. And you make it different. You make it new every day. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, like my mercy. It's like my mercy. Every day that he paints this sunrise and he creates this thing in the sky. It's a new thing. And it's unique for that day. And it's just like his mercy. It's made new every day. And what I said was, it's like, uh, talking about the sunrise to the Lord, I said, you make it new like this wonderful, beautiful thing every day. Whether anybody sees it or not. Whether they pay attention or not. 
It's still there. Like His mercy. It's there. Whether we recognize it or not. It's there. And it's made new every day. His faithfulness is there every day. His love is there. His kindness is there. His goodness is there. His steadfastness. His commitment is there every day. Brand new. Just like every sunrise. It's there. Praise God. Whether we recognize it or not. You know, for uh, 23 years, I didn't recognize it. But one day I did. Praise God. Thank God I recognized His mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Psalms 59, verse 16 says, But I will sing of thy power, yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning. For thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto thee, O oh my strength, will I sing, for God is my defense, the God of my mercy. Praise God. Something, too, that I experienced on third shift that uh, I'd never experienced on any other job before is that uh, I remember coming in before, and there's a hearse sitting there. They come on the back side, and there'd be a hearse sitting there. You know, people die in the hospital. It happens. It's, it's part of life. And uh, one night I was walking in, and I prayed something I never prayed before. I said, thank you, Lord, for the mercy that you extended to that person in life and the mercy that you now extend to their family. It never crossed my mind before. I don't know if God was trying, just showing me something. It just came out of my mouth as I was walking in the back door to the chiller plant there. I seen that hearse there. And thank God for your mercy in that person's life. I don't know anything about that person. I don't know what decisions they made. I don't know what prayers they prayed. I don't know the times that God dealt with them, talked to them, because He does do it. He does it in everybody's life at some point or another. Whether they talk about it or not. Because that's how good he is. And so, Lord, I don't, I don't know where they were at. I don't know what happened in their life. I don't know anything about it. But I know you were there. And I thank you for it. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. And I'm going to share a story with you. Something that, uh, and I felt very strongly multiple times to do this. So, just go with me here on this. Praise God. I was, uh, I was at work at Carbondale several weeks ago, a month ago or something. And things were kind of slow. Thank God that happens every once in a while. Because they'll run you to death. It's crazy. And, you know, like, uh, had some paper sitting there. It might have been the Daily Egyptian or something. I don't know. I'd pick it up and flip it to it. And I saw this color picture of this face. And I didn't realize what I was looking at. You know, like this little boy's face. And then it said obituary. And I'm like, I'm looking at this little boy's face, and I'm just kind of overwhelmed. And I start to read about this little boy. And uh, you could tell by the picture of his face that he had some type of a handicap or something. And uh, but just the sweetest, most beautiful face. His name was Samuel. He was 11 years old. Praise God. And the Lord just broke me down over this boy. And I'm reading about this boy, and I'm thinking about his family. And he had a uh, and a brother, three sisters, 11 years old. And they went to a, a, some local church here. And I was talking about this little boy, and I was thinking about his family. I just began to pray for him, felt such a burden for him, losing this precious little boy. And uh, talking about Samuel and how he loved to go to church and he loved to sing. He loved music and he loved to be held. Praise God. And I just. It just broke me down. I just cried. I'm like, I'm the only one back in here, and I'm just, I'm just praying and crying over this thing, this boy and his family. And the Lord showed me that this little boy, he went forth from God 11 years before. God sent him forth into life. And he watched him every day. And he was with him every day. And he was with his family every day. He was always there. And in death, God was there. He went forth from God, and he came back to God. And I believe with great anticipation, Jesus waited for little Samuel to come home to him. Praise God. And I began to think about it. Samuel, 
you love music and you love to sing. And now you're in the midst of all this praise and worship and the most beautiful music that you've ever heard. And you'll always be held. You'll love to be held and he's holding you right now. Praise God. That's the mercy of God. His love, his commitment, his steadfastness, his faithfulness, whether we recognize it or not, he is there. Praise God. He is always there. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Matthew 24, 35 says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. In God's mercy and His steadfastness and His faithfulness and His commitment to mankind, to His creation, to His people, He upholds His Word and He's given us His Word that won't change, that won't pass away, that we can rely on, that we can look to, regardless of what we feel, regardless of what we think, because all those things can betray us. I think we, we can all, we have all come to that realization, praise God. Your feelings can betray you. What you look around, what you see can betray you. Praise God. But you can look to God's Word. Even when you don't feel the Holy Ghost, when you're not thinking straight, you can look to God's Word and you can stand on that Word. Praise God. Hebrews 13, 5. Praise God. Let your conversation, your way of life, that's what that means, conversation, way of life. Let your way of life be without covetousness, that means not loving money, and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Praise God. That we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Philippians 4.11 Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned that whatsoever state I am in, therefore, therewith, to be content. I know both how to be abased and how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed to be both full and hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Philippians 1, 2. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all making requests with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident in this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it to the end or until the day of Jesus Christ. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Praise God. Regardless of how things appear, or how you feel, or in what state you find yourself, we can draw confidence with the rising of every sun. Praise God. That His mercies are made new. That His love is made new. That his commitment, his faithfulness, his steadfastness, his goodness is made new every day. Praise God. And we need to take advantage of that opportunity. Well, we can take advantage of it. We need to seek him while he can be found. Don't let a day go by without tapping into the mercy of God. Talk to him. Seek him in prayer. Lean upon him. Call upon him. If you don't know what to do, say, Lord, help me out here. Guide me. Show me what to do. I don't, I'm not thinking right. Help me to think right. Help me that I can see things the way that you want me to see them. That I can think about myself the way that you want me to think about myself. That I can think about who I am the way that you see me. Not how I think about myself. Because you can be wrong. For the longest time, I thought wrong about myself. I've told this story, and some people laugh at me, but I remember whenever I got baptized, I repented in, I think it was June, June, yeah, sometime in June of 96, I repented for the first time, it was like a process, I can't really narrow it down, I can't pinpoint it, because I didn't really understand fully what was happening, but I repented for the first time in June of 96, I was baptized July 28th 
1996. They had some kind of bowling party or something afterwards. Now, I'm not much for like, you know, socializing that kind of thing. I really wasn't then now, but I can make myself do it and be happy about it now. It's like harder for me. I, you know, I like to be at home. I like to be with my wife and kids. That's what I like to do. Praise God. But I can go to things and I can be a part, but it was difficult for me then. And I just got baptized, but I went because I felt like, you know, I was supposed to go. I want to be a part of things. And I'm still overwhelmed by this experience of being baptized. And I just, just wanted to go. Just wanted to be around God's people. And, uh, but they were only playing basketball and doing whatever and stuff like that. And I'm just kind of sitting to myself and I'm pondering, you know, all this. And for some reason, I got my wallet out and I looked at my driver's license. I looked at the picture of myself. And I realized for the first time in my life, I loved myself. I actually loved me. And I liked where I was at and where I was going. I liked what was happening in me. And I didn't like myself before. I didn't really love myself before. But because God came into my life, and He was touching me, and He was helping me, and He washed away my sins, and He made me clean, clean slate, starting over, and He was dealing with me, and He was talking to me. I loved myself for the first time in my life, and I liked what was happening inside of me. And I was so thankful for that. I remember just crying, looking at this picture of myself. I've told this story before, and some people look at you like you're kind of crazy. You ever feel like love yourself for the first time? I'm talking about it. But, you know, <laughs> praise God. That's what happened. Yeah. You know, you can't deny it. I mean, you've got to be honest about these things. That's where I was at. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It was a process. It took time. For me to get to where I needed to go, I had to go through so much stuff, it's just crazy. I mean, you can back the story up and like, and just for years, and teenage years, and all this stuff that happens. I was telling, I was telling my little girl about this, and I didn't expect her to understand it, but you know, we was flipping through like Netflix, you know, looking for movies, and I come across Braveheart. I watched Braveheart one time. I was like 19 years old or something like that. Went to the theater and I've seen this movie for the first time. I haven't watched it since. My friends thought something was wrong with me. Because everything in that movie, it's like God made that movie to deal with me. He had that movie made and he, he, he used it to touch me in a way that I've never been touched before. Everything that I believed in at that time in my life was meaningful to me as a teenager. It was meaningful to me as a young man and where I thought I wanted to go and what I wanted to be. And all my greatest fears like played out in this character's life in this movie. I was broken into like a thousand pieces. I'm sitting here. I got my girlfriend sitting next to me and one of my best friends like sitting next to her. And I'm like this heap of blubbering, snotting, crying, convulsing, quivering, 19-year-old kid, you know. I'm just... And they're like, what in the world? They're like looking at me like, what's wrong with you, you know? I had to sit there for like 20 minutes to regroup. Well, they went outside to pull it together. I didn't know what was going on. But God broke me down. It was a process. He broke me down to help change the direction of my life at that point. And I was still four years away from getting the Holy Ghost. Just broke me. Like, just changed the way that I thought about stuff. I felt something was, I felt different walking out of there. That's crazy. Like, you know, you just tell some people that, they would think you were crazy. Like, God touched you through, like, this Mel Gibson movie, like, made it in, like, 19, like, 92, or, like, whatever, about this Scottish guy and this king and, like, all this stuff. Are you out of your mind? God will use anything that he can to get to you and to touch you and to help you and to change the direction of your life and the way that He wants you to go. And whatever it takes, I don't care. I'm thankful for it. Whatever it takes, praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Because His mercy is made new every day. Praise God. Made new every day. Oh, thank you, Jesus. One last scripture and I'm done. Praise God. Unless the Lord gives me some other story. To tell you. Praise God. Isaiah 41.10 Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the, with the right hand of my righteousness.
Praise God. Seek the Lord. Praise God. Every day. Take advantage of that mercy and that grace that comes with every, the rising of every sun. Because you don't know whenever your last, the last sunrise is going to be. There are no guarantees. There's no promise of tomorrow. Praise God. You never know. This might be the last time you ever lay eyes on me unless I'm laying in a box. I hope not. I want to be there for my wife and my babies, but God knows. Irregardless, God knows. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God spoke through a donkey, so I don't know why he couldn't speak through Mel Gibson. Amen. <laughs> he knows how to get a hold of us, how to get our attention.